Hello, welcome back to Brand Sushi Live Noting. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at Sorkar um, loop nodes, um, especially the the simple one, begin for and end for loop. So I made a couple of tries on how to present this, but every time I I made something, it's a uh, something that's completely different. Um, it's depending on how you started and how you like to loop. Uh, when when it comes to 3D modeling and thinking thinking of looping, it it gets slightly confusing or tricky sometimes. Um, I I actually figure out that it's almost like a tissue add-on and how you apply um, an adaptive uh, mesh into another mesh. It's a it's a little bit like this um, this result over here. Um, it's like uh, some kind of creature with tentacles, sausage, but uh, each one of these tentacles can be of different size or length. And it's almost like a um, tissue add-on, once again, like if you are applying um, an element input into an object, let's see if I have tissue add-on here. So I do have it. Um, tessellate, should I do it right now? So with tissue add-on, normally you have an object <coughs> uh, with a polygon face that you want to apply an input, and then you and then you tessellate. Oops. So by doing that, you are really applying this into every face of this object. But tissue add-on, of course, have a lot of things going on that's allowing you to do the, like a recursive loop. So applying this guy on top of the same one. So it's almost like, so this is what's going to happen if you're using like a, like a loop using Sorcar. It's a, but anyway, let's, let's try, let's give it a try. The easiest one to try to, to start with, maybe start with a plane, but a plane is just a square. So probably you want to try circle so it's a little bit more interesting later on so circle with a vertices of four it becomes just a simple plane but you also want to have a face face let's generate and gone it's a file save so it's gonna be uh, circle loop something like that and with this circle we want to do just like a simple things like inset and maybe extrude 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 faces or just extrude so I often get that a bit confusing but let's try this so inset Preview. We can adjust the thickness and the depth. So we can do inset twice actually because inset is really such an interesting node. Inset is almost like extrude if you if you leave the thickness to zero. So that's nice. <clears throat> and then you try extruding region. Okay, this is like a it's a normal extrude, but you see it's using negative value, which is uh, kind of interesting. Maybe we just use extrude. There's a normal extrude, which is also... Yeah, slightly weird. Extrude faces, how about extrude faces? So it's normal extrude again with a negative value. Oh well, let's keep this simple and just just use actually just inset and then a little bit of extrude and then we want to loop this and we don't want you can actually do something like this and then get a different result and it's gonna get <clears throat> smaller and smaller. So normally, if you're doing it this way. You're gonna end up with a lot of uh, nodes, and you don't want this to happen, so you want to use just 
simple looping. So you're gonna loop one, two, three operations into single, single easy to use group. So we're gonna use begin. So we have a lot of flow control, a lot of loop and if else. The component one can can be quite dangerous because it doesn't have the kind of the closure. So let's use a simple one. Begin for loop and then and and for loop. The funny thing funny thing about these nodes, however, it doesn't seem to have output. Oh, actually, 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 it does have out output. So. Uh, don't worry about that. So let's plug this um, plug this object into the input, and then the output goes into this guy, and this goes in there, and then we connect these two, All right? Set preview. Suddenly we have, suddenly we have this. Um, let's try iteration one, two, three, four, five, six. So at when when the point when the extrusion become too small, Sorkar seems to be smart enough to just keep going with the small value. Somehow that's. That seems what's going on, or maybe it's become too small. It's kind of recursively doing it underneath. But now, just now I enlarged the circle, and if I made changes here, suddenly we have some kind of building. So this is like really the basis of looping. The nice thing about Sorcar is that you can, of course, go ahead and then continue with the object. Ah, so yeah, and then you, you can you can probably start modeling the the top part, like with the circle. There is no start and end, but with a when thinking about loop, I like to think of it like a kind of like an array array modifier where you have you can have the the head and the tail and whatever in between. So this is really uh, what's going on. So we can, for example, have an inset that's outside of the loop, and we can have some kind of depth. So the bottom part, so we can control the bottom part and then whatever in between that's happening here. And also we can control what's going on in between, and we can control this guy and also the iterations so that's why uh, it's kind of interesting and can be really powerful but uh, if you try this yourself it can get quite tricky if you use this the first time so this begin and end loops once you understand it if I select this and then control J this loop becoming easy to understand and actually can be quite powerful. Let's colorize this. So we start with circle and go on and begin for loop and end for loop. Um, you might notice something over here. There is a counter. There's a counter here. Let me give it the frame. With the counter, you can actually plug this in into any of this value. Just like that. And this counter goes from whatever, I think, start from zero and then goes up to whatever iterations you have here. Zero to five, maybe. And then you can, you can use like a, something like random, for example number random number with the different seed turn on the seed turn on random so the seed can come from this counter 
and this random value will be will start to generate numbers and you can then plug this in into any of this to get some kind of randomness and you can use math operation maybe like multiplier and then just multiply the value so I believe this is really it's gonna generate random number but this number seems to be quite limited it doesn't have minimum and maximum maybe so oh, okay I can map range it so maybe that's how you do it so minimum maximum I don't know what's the minimum and maximum but I'm just gonna do it like this still like a trial and error okay so we I'm guessing this is like kind of random number plugging in there let's try over here oh it's failing so yeah now it's starting to get more interesting as I play around with the value we also need to be careful on the the actual face orientations when the value gets wrong like that's kind of wrong and with what I'm doing here of course with the simply with loop and inset and extrude we can easily get a something that's kind of wrong like that's wrong because we kind of like a trial and error over here uh, yeah you can go minus value and it's gonna give random value right so so far so good we didn't get anything that's too weird um, So at this point, you really, you might ask, maybe you, maybe if we, what if we replace the circle with something else like plane or grid or even like like a sphere? So what's really gonna happen is something like that. So this one is probably overlapping. Oh, it's not. It's actually it's looking pretty good. Some mesh seems to be overlapping I don't know what's going on there if I display so it's uh, definitely there's overlapping which is not a bad thing if you think about it. if you actually just remesh it and then you just want to print it out okay yeah this will work maybe the better way is to smooth it and see what's actually going on so so apparently there's a lot of extrusion happening on the icosphere yeah it's not a bad not a bad surface it's just unusual because normally you don't normally you don't do, do this process um, visually let's try this grid Okay, grid, grid, get something that's really bizarre. So we have these objects. So, so that's the first one. It's a preview. Where is our object? Okay, this guy over here, the grid, probably too small. Okay, 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 so. Okay, so this is the, the right way to look at it.
So grid three by three, that means four faces. That's why. Um, so we have we have randomness. So we can set the height slight a little bit more random. Thickness depth. Okay, this depth we can also randomize if you like. Plug this. Ah, not too interesting. Individual. Okay, individual will either separate or combine it. Okay, this is also interesting. So inset have this individual and then okay like this is uh why I think inset nodes is really interesting because it has a lot of more options. If you if you reveal all this option you're gonna have a lot of more things to play around with. Select inset okay so what if I enable select inset? What happens is that after this, after these operations, the next selections will change. We'll select the actual inset. That's why we get this weird result. This is actually another thing with uh, another thing with inset. You can go minus if you enable. If you enable boundary or outset, oh well. Loop. This is why loop is a bit strange, but I think this is a good example. Somehow I, I made this. Um, there's a couple of other example that I I, I just put it on my GitHub. Maybe this list will grow. Um, so there are really like unlimited possibilities with with loop because if you just use math, say you start with a number x, and you add a plus one minus two, maybe multiply and then you repeat it multiple mul multiple times and then you when you start to use logic like if else maybe like if you make this this guy a little bit taller. If you iterate more on this guy and this one less, and what if you randomize also the operations? If you have multiple operations, you start to end. You're gonna end up with like uh, something that's completely uh, cannot be described. It just need to be uh, seen. Okay, so any changes you made over here, even a small thing, can give a completely different result. I can try like even with just selections select all all random select select random put it over there there you go select random And more iterations gonna be like be careful with iterations because this might grows very very quickly and then you're gonna end up with with a mesh like a soup of polygons and maybe blender might crash or calculates too long but yeah there we go there's a quick look at loop but this is just a really simple one begin for loop and end for loop there's also a loop that works for every component and there's also a loop that's you need to kind of create closure yourself it's not like a simple iterations so definitely this one might crash or it's not gonna go for a while but anyway thanks again for tuning in hopefully this is useful with the looping um, give this a try yourself and then see what you can come up with um, and i'll see you next time thank you bye